Hello everyone. Welcome to Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. My name is Chen and today we'll be going over an overview of the limbic system and we'll cover the specifics in the coming videos. The limbic system is a complex set of structures that lies on both sides of the thalamus, just under the cerebrum. It is commonly known as the center for emotion, behavior, motivation, and long-term memory, as well as olfaction. Before we talk about the limbic system, we have to talk about its precursor, which is the circuit of Pappies. This circuit was initially described by James Pappies in 1937, and it goes as follows. Signal first starts in the subiculum of the hippocampus, We'll cover the details of the speculum in the hippocampus lecture. Signal then travels through the fornix into the mammillary body over here. It then travels through the mammalothalamic tract into the anterior nucleus of the thalamus over here. The signal then travels further up into the cingulate gyrus, which is in continuity with the parahippocampal region all the way down here, which is also in continuity with the subiculum and therefore forming a circuit and hence is referred to as the circuit of Pappies. And here's another slide to demonstrate that the cingulate gyrus is in direct continuity with the parahippocampal gyrus and the uncus over here. And notice the location of the structures are in a somewhat circular structure. And this is why this circuit is later called the limbus, which is Latin for border or an edge or particularly in med medical terminology, a border of an anatomical component, such as the limbus as in the edge of the cornea where it joins the sclera. And now these structures together are known as the limbic lobe. And further studies began to associate these areas with emotional and motivational processes and then linked them to other subcortical components such as the four basal forebrain, the septal area, the amygdala over here in the hippocampus, and eventually were grouped together into what is called the limbic system. And so the definition of the anatomical structures of the limbic system is somewhat controversial because there's no set one set structure that defines all. Now, different references will consider different structures to be in or not in the limbic system. But the exact definition or distinction is not very important for the purpose of the board exam. Uh, but rather it is more important to know the spatial relationships between each other. So I'm showing this slide as a reference as to what are the important structures that we will be covering. And feel free to refer back to this slide at any point of the video. But first, let's look at the structures in the limbic system from a different angles, from a couple of different angles. Here we have just the major limbic structures and the rest of the brain stripped away. Just to orient yourself, this is the anterior, posterior, superior, and inferior. The thalamus sits right here, and the corpus callosum is roughly here. So let's start from the mammillary bodies. They transmit signal via the fornix into the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is directly continuous with a specific structure 
called indicium grisium. And this structure eventually ends in the septonucleus over here. And the septonucleus is actually continuous with the cingulate gyrus shown here. And the cingulate gyrus is also in continuous with the parahippocampal gyrus and that is also in continuous with the hippocampus and thus completing a, a full circuit. Here we have a sagittal view of the brain and the anterior being here and posterior being here. Now let's start with the circuit of Pappies. First we have this subiculum of the hippocampus over here and it signal goes into the fornix all the way around into the mammillary body over here which is part of the hypothalamus signal then go to mammalothalamic tract into the anterior nucleus of the thalamus over here and it eventually goes into the cingulate gyrus all the way around and is this gyrus is continuous with the parahippocampal gyrus. In the anterior third of the parahippocampus called gyrus is called the entorhinal cortex, which is part of the olfactory system. And the olfactory system is also in the limbic system. And the structures starts with the olfactory bulb, goes into the olfactory tracts, and at the end of it, split into the medial olfactory striae and a lateral olfactory striae. The medial olfactory striae ends in the septal area over here. And the septal area is in direct continuity with the cingulate gyrus and therefore completing a loop around. The septal area is also in direct continuity with the structure called indicium grisium, just above the corpus callosum. And that the tail end of that is continuous with the hippocampus, thus making another loop. The lateral olfactory striae goes into the amygdalo hippocampal complex over here. And there is communication between the septal area and the amygdala hippocampal uh, complex. And this track that connects the two is called the diagonal band of Broca. The amygdala is also goes to the hypo, uh, hypothalamus via a structure called striae terminalis. And we've kind of talked about that in you know, we talked about that in the habinulum lecture. And the habinulum here connects with the septal area in the hypothalamus via the structure called striae medullaris over here. And the output of the habinular nucleus goes to the interpeduncular nucleus via a structure called fasciculus retroflexus. And you can get more information on the habinular, habinular nucleus in that in the epithalamus lectures. Here is a more top-down view of the limbic structures. And this view is good at looking at the anterior structures, especially the olfactory system. The olfactory system starts with the olfactory bulb and then splits into a medial and lateral olfactory striae. The medial olfactory striae terminates in the septal region. The lateral olfactory striae terminates in the amygdala parahippocampal complex. And there is crosstalk between the septal region and the amygdala, amygdala parahippocampal complex via the diagonal band of Broca. 
and this boundary here in the center is called the anterior perforated substance where the anterior perforating arteries supplies blood to the basal ganglia. The hippocampus then it loops around and becomes the indicium grisium that we talked about in the previous slides. The hippocampus also provides attachment to the fornix is better shown over here, that then goes into the mammillary bodies. It then travels up through the mammothalamic tracts into the anterior nucleus of the thalamus. There you have it. That's the overview of the limbic system. I hope I didn't beat the dead horse too much. But we'll go over the specifics of each structure in more detail in the coming lectures, and I hope you stay tuned for more. Thank you.